Hi, in this video, we will expand the problem of stereo vision from what is called simple stereo to the uncalibrated setup. In simple stereo, we have two cameras that are identical, that they are completely aligned, and the only difference is that they are displaced from each other a certain distance on the x axis. In the uncalibrated setup, we remove those limitations. The cameras can be different and the angle in which we place them doesn't need to be the same. The only requirement is that we need to be able to see some points in both images. If we have two cameras that does not look at the same points, we won't be able to find the correspondence between each one. However, we can create systems that use more than two cameras to solve the problem, and we find corresponding points on each pair. But the solution for using two cameras is enough and then can be expanded to any number of cameras that a particular application might need. Well-known binocular systems use a simple stereo configuration. So what do we need this uncalibrated stereo setup? Simple stereo is enough for certain applications, but sometimes we need more information about the object that we want to manipulate. Some industrial robots use a range of cameras that are not aligned, so the system can see another angle of the piece in the production line. Another typical application is the reconstruction of 3D scenes, using pictures taken from different angles. In those cases, first we need to find the translation and rotation between the cameras, and then the calculation is the same that in simple stereo. So let's start with some concepts of epipolar geometry. We have our two cameras. Each one has their own coordinate system. We see the images with their coordinates U and B. The point is somewhere here, and we can draw the line that goes from each camera origin to the point. Now we draw a line that connects both camera origins. This triangle forms a plane that is called the epipolar plane. These points in the image are called the epipoles. The epipole ER is a projection of the origin of the first camera into the image observed by the second camera and vice versa. There is an imaginary line that connects the epipole with the point UB. This line is called the epipolar line. And it's important because we know that any point UV in the right image must lie in the epipolar line associated with UB in the left image. This relationship is called the epipolar constraint and plays a key role in the following process. And we can write it like this. XL dot product of the T cross product of XR is equal to zero where XL is the line that goes from the origin to the point, and T is the translation vector. To understand a bit more where these come from, we can write this expression in the matrix form. So now we have the dot product in the left and the cross product on the right. Here we can see that T is form of two matrices. The first one is related to the translation, and the second one is related to the rotation. And those tell us the position of one camera with respect to the other one. When we multiply these two matrices, we obtain the essential matrix. That is a 3 by 3 matrix that contains all the information needed. So in its simplified form, we can write it like this. XL transpose multiplied by the essential matrix multiplied by XR equals to zero. However, this formula 
XL and XR are the 3D positions of the point. And that is what we are looking for. So they are unknown. So in the same way that we did in previous video, we can use the perspective projection equations and we can write this matrix representation where we describe a point using the coordinates U and B of the image, the camera parameters that we know, and their 3D coordinates. So if we call K to the internal camera matrix, we can rewrite the epipolar constraint equations once more. And now we have a description based on the points UV on each camera. The essential matrix is a 3x3 three three matrix in the same way that the matrices KL and KR. And when we multiply them, they form what we call the fundamental matrix. Now we can go in reverse to find the translation and rotation of our system. Okay, let's go back to the example. So we have two images from a scene that were taken from different angles. The first step is to identify corresponding points in both images. We can use any methods such as SIFT to identify the same point in each image. We can even manually select them. At this stage, we only need a minimum of H points that we are going to use to calibrate the system. So once that we have our UV points, we can plug them into the equation of the epipolar constraint to find the fundamental matrix. We can expand this into linear equations like this one. But the best way to see it is on the matrix form. So, we have a linear system like this in which the first matrix is formed by all the points we collected. Then the fundamental matrix is on a vector shape. And all of this is equal to zero. Now we can solve the linear system and rearrange the F values to form the fundamental matrix. Once we find this fundamental matrix, then we can apply the formula that includes the camera matrix to find the essential matrix. And then using singular value decomposition, we can obtain the translation and rotation. And now we have calibrated our system. The final stage is the computation of the depth map. We can start with the camera equation that we used before. Here we have the U and B points of the image, the camera parameters, and the world coordinates. And we have the same for the other camera. It doesn't matter which camera you use as the reference point. So we can exchange this term for the translation and rotation matrix to obtain the projection from one camera to the other. The second camera equation stays the same. We can multiply the camera parameters by the translation and rotation, and we can call this the projection matrix. And we can write it then in a compact form. Now, this linear system can be rearranged in this way, where we have a 4x3 matrix that we know, a vector of world coordinates, and a vector of the difference between cameras. If you remember the example of simple stereo, this is the distance B. So now you can solve this system using least squares to obtain XR. And that will give you the depth map for each pair of points. Okay, in this video, we review the epipolar geometry and the problem of uncalibrated stereo system. See you in the next video.